I've got a really cool example today. Eduardo asked on one of my previous videos if I could make something similar to a GIF that he shared. So he shared an interaction, asked if I could recreate it. And so I'm kind of doing my take on it. And I like this one a lot because I've been doing a lot of behavior examples lately, but this one makes use of behavior and a transition. Okay, so I've already drawn two screens inside of Flinto that are gonna make up this interaction. Let's focus on the first screen, which is gonna have a hover effect when you hover over this chairs row. And I'm gonna do that with a behavior. Now let me show you something that's hiding here. I've got this clip group, which means that the group is masked off. So I've resized it down to zero height and faded it out. But this is what it's gonna look like when you hover over it. So let me scale that back down so you can't see it and fade it out. And now let's create a behavior. So here's the group that encloses that pink row and the normal looking row. I'll click behavior and in the behavior designer, I'll add a new state. In this state, I'm gonna reveal that pink row by fading it in and expanding the clip group so it reveals the content inside of it. So there's the animation. Now to get from the initial state, I'll draw a link that covers that whole row, target the new state, and use a mouse over gesture. And from this state, I'll draw a link over this row and target the initial state. This will use a mouse out gesture. Okay, now I'll jump into the preview and try that out. Cool, so that part works. I've got the hover effect. Now I'm gonna make it so that when I click here, I go to the other screen. And in order to do that, I'm gonna select this group, which has the behavior on it that I just created, and go over here in the inspector, find that behavior, and change the default state from initial state to new state. That's the one that shows the pink row. And I did that because I wanna more easily access that pink row and it's called bold here in the layer list. So I'll click create link and I'm gonna create a link to this new screen. And then I'll click new transition. So when you click there, it'll use this transition to go to the detail screen. Now in the transition designer, I'm seeing the original screen with that uh, pink row activated, which is how it's gonna look when you click on it because it will have already revealed itself when you hovered over it. Okay, for this transition, I'm going to align the screens. So I'll click the align screens checkbox and at the start of the transition, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide this navigation bar by sliding it off the top. I'm going to hide this row of photos by sliding them off the right. And these text layers are going to be connected to their counterparts in the other screen. Same with the background rectangle. So I'll start with the rectangle. I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to go here to the start screen and find the corresponding rectangle here. I'm going to hold command and click on that. So both are selected. And then I'll click connect layers. Okay, now those layers are connected, so they'll automatically animate from how it looks in the start screen to how it looks in the end screen. Now I'm gonna connect the text labels, and you can't currently see the text labels here because when I made that connection, it brought the layer from the start screen up to the layer in the end screen, which is on top of the other text. Now you could fix that by using the Z-index option for connected layers and choose match to lower. But it doesn't matter in this case because I'm actually gonna be connecting these text layers as well. So I'm gonna take Monday here and select it to Monday here. And that says Monday because I originally typed the word Monday into that text layer and I never renamed it. But that's the one that has a description of the chairs item. So I've got those two selected. I'll click connect layers and then I'll select the chairs title and select its counterpart in the other screen and connect those. So the chairs, text label, the description are the same, should be treated as the same layers in the start screen and the end screen. And this pink row will also be treated as the same thing in the start screen and the end screen. So let's see how this looks. I'm gonna hold shift and play it in slow motion. So you can see the text now automatically moves down and the background pink rectangle is expanded up from the one in the start screen and the other layers animate in nicely. All right, so this is looking good. I'm gonna exit out of the transition designer, and then I'm just gonna put a big link over this entire screen, so just so I have a way to get back. And I'll target the back link. And I don't wanna to forget to change this back to the initial state, because that's what it should look like at the start. And now let's check out the preview. So I've got my hover effect, 
And now when I click down, it does the transition to this screen and I can go back. If you like that video, be sure to subscribe because I post new videos every weekday. And if you have an idea for a video you'd like to see, please leave a comment because I've been making videos based on the feedback that I'm getting in the comments.